Step Into the World of the High Chaparral, a TV show from 1967 that takes you on a wild ride of feelings. As you watch, get ready for a mix of funny, surprising, and sad moments. This series has become a lasting symbol of the entertainment world. When did you first see it? Share your stories and favorite memories of the show in the comments below. Share your experiences with us. The TV series The High Chaparral, which debuted in 1967, had a big effect on TV. It left a lasting mark that people still feel today. The show talked about things like family, honor, and survival in the Old West. The TV show changed how people thought about Westerns. It showed characters and their relationships in a different way. It had strong women characters and talked about race and who people are, which was new for its time. The show's lasting influence can be seen in other Westerns and TV dramas that came after it. People still remember the characters and the stories. It inspired future filmmakers and writers. Today, people still connect with what the High Chaparral talked about. The struggles of the characters are still interesting to viewers. It shows how good stories can stay with people for a long time. In short, the High Chaparral made a big impact and it still matters today. It talked about things that people still care about. Standing tall at 6'3", he faced a challenge in The Great Gatsby where his co-star, nearly a foot shorter, needed a crate to match heights. For their scenes together, he had to stand in a hole as shared by his daughter, Patsy. Originally from Greenwood High School in Millerstown, Pa, he graduated in 1936. Apart from his height-related anecdotes, he had various roles, notably as Don Diego de la Vega Zorro. He played the character in The New Adventures of Zorro and Zorro and Son, and also portrayed Zorro's father, Don Alexandro de la Vega, in Zorro. He is the only actor to have successfully played both Zorro and his father. In summary, his career, marked by diverse roles and a unique height-related experience, includes the distinction of portraying both Zorro and his father in different adaptations. The TV series from the late 1960s, The High Chaparral, had some interesting connections with Hollywood stars. Esther Williams, for instance, starred alongside the show in three films Fiesta, On an Island with You, and Neptune's Daughter. It also featured collaborations with Yvonne De Carlo in three films Sombrero, The Mark of Zorro, and One Ton Ton, The Dog Who Saved Hollywood. Behind the scenes, the series had an assistant director who was the son of the famous director Erich von Stroheim. There was also a casting change with Douglas Fowley being replaced as Doc Holliday in The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp for several episodes in 1958 and 1959. Fowley had to leave due to extended filming in West Germany for another project. These connections and changes added depth to the show's story, showing how the entertainment industry is interconnected. It's interesting to see ties to well-known figures and unexpected casting changes. In summary, the story of The High Chaparral goes beyond its on-screen plot, with collaborations with Hollywood stars and connections to legendary directors, giving it a unique historical context. The High Chaparral is a TV series set in a chaparral, which is an evergreen shrubland found in California and parts of Mexico. The name comes from the Spanish word chaparro, referring to an evergreen oak shrubland. The show follows the life of Woodward Ritter, also known as Tex Ritter, who was named after his uncle, Dr. S.A. Woodward, from San Angelo, Texas. Tex Ritter later attended the Theater School of Dramatic Arts in New York City. The series portrays the challenges and adventures faced by Tex Ritter in the Chaparral, offering viewers a glimpse into life in that rugged landscape. The High Chaparral, a TV series from 1967, featured Morgan Woodward in the role of M. Duval in The Lady of the Camellias, earning him a Tony Award nomination for Best Featured Actor in a Play. Woodward, born in Arlington, Texas, received the Lifetime Achievement in the Arts Award from the Texas Arts Council in 1994. His alma mater, Fairfax High School in Los Angeles, California, witnessed his graduation. Arlington, Texas, honored Woodward by naming a street after him, called Morgan Woodward Way. David Rose composed the theme song for The High Chaparral, adapting it from his work on a Bonanza episode. In one memorable episode, Robert Horton receives 20 lashes from a bullwhip. Meredith Baxter mentioned in her biography that her stepfather, Jack X. Fields, hosted Frank Silvera, who coached her for a role she didn't get. He stayed in a guest room, earning the nickname The Man Who Came to Dinner. Barry Sullivan was known for his impressive pitching skills back in his days at Greenwood High School. After receiving offers from several major league teams, he made a mark in the world of baseball. 
His personal life had its ups and downs with two children from his first marriage, Johnny and Jenny Sullivan. Johnny faced mental challenges and went to the DeVeru School in Santa Barbara, California for help and evaluation. Jenny, on the other hand, became an actress and playwright. She wrote a play called J for J, inspired by discovering some old letters her father had written to Johnny. The play premiered on October 20, 2001, with John Ritter playing Johnny and Jenny playing herself. Jeff Kober portrayed Barry Sullivan in the play. David Dortort, the producer, originally wanted Barry Sullivan to star alongside Leif Erikson in The High Chaparral. The show began in 1967 and showcased Sullivan's acting talent in an important role. In summary, Barry Sullivan's life was full of achievements in baseball, family struggles, and a significant role in the high chaparral as David Dortort's preferred co-lead. He faced personal challenges, but also took on familial responsibilities over time. The High Chaparral is a TV series from 1967. It features a cattle rancher named Big John Cannon, played by an actor known for his Nordic appearance. Before his role in the High Chaparral, he worked as a singer and trombonist. He appeared in films from 1933, often in westerns based on Zane Grey novels. Initially credited as Glenn Erickson, his first name was changed to Leif due to his Nordic appearance. He played various roles, including marshals and sheriffs, as well as Deborah Carr's husband in Tea and Sympathy. The assistant director for some episodes of The High Chaparral was the son of the legendary actor-director Erich von Stroheim. Before working on the series, he attended and graduated from New Dorp High School in Staten Island, New York in 1947, and later studied Autoes Sin, California. The High Chaparral, a TV series from 1967, featured actor Ricardo Montalban. Montalban's standout role, according to New Yorker critic Paul and Kale, was as Khan Noonien Singh in Star Trek To the Wrath of Khan. Kale praised Montalban's performance, citing it as validation of his ability to command the big screen. Montalban also portrayed the captain of the Goliath in the deep, although his scenes were ultimately cut. Despite this, he agreed to reprise his role as Khan in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan for a modest fee of $100,000 because he held a deep affection for the character. To prepare for the role, Montalban revisited the original series episode Space Seed to ensure he captured Khan's essence accurately, expressing concern that he might inadvertently sound like another character he portrayed Mr. Rourke. The High Chaparral, a television series that aired in 1967, saw the participation of an actor who began his career on stage with Harlem's American Negro Theater and later with the actor's studio. He maintained a strict diet and exercise routine, resulting in an impressive physique. Director Nicholas Mayer dispelled rumors of prosthetics being used for muscular enhancement during filming. The High Chaparral actor's daughter, Patsy Sullivan, was a model known for representing Yardley Cosmetics at a young age. She married songwriter Jimmy Webb, and together they had six children, eventually adopting another. This brought the actor seven grandchildren, two of whom formed the rock group The Webb Brothers alongside their siblings.